Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well today. In this video, we're going to be covering a few Solana farms. Not only is a DeFi game getting hot on Solana, but NFTs are also taking off. By watching this video in its entirety, I'll teach you guys how to get started by setting up a wallet. After that, I'll show you guys how to transfer funds from Ethereum over to Solana. And I'll conclude the video by showing you guys a few DeFi farms and some NFT platforms. Now, after watching this video, if you guys have any questions or you guys wanted to connect with like-minded individuals, then I strongly recommend that you guys go ahead and check out my discord channel but if you're not into discord at the very least make sure you guys go ahead and give me a follow on twitter it's a great way for you guys to get industry highlights learn about projects that i'm interested in and also to get my insights in real time both the links to my discord channel and my twitter profile can be found in the description below with the intro out of the way let's go ahead and dive into this video My wallet of choice for the Solana network is Phantom. Not only can you send and receive crypto assets in your wallet, but you can collect NFTs in it. You can swap tokens in it, which is pretty useful if you have assets on Ethereum, for example. Instead of going to a decentralized exchange on Solana, you can just use the wallet itself to go ahead and purchase Solana and other crypto assets. And it's also supported by the major browsers out there like Chrome, Brave, Firefox, and Edge. And on top of all of that, you can go ahead and connect your ledger to it. You can go ahead and use it to stake your soul tokens. That feature isn't out yet, but it's coming soon. And in my experience, most of the protocols and platforms on Solana will support the Phantom wallet. Now I do have a wallet called Sullyit. You can go ahead and download it at sullyit.io. By the way, the links to all the wallets and all the protocols that I'm to be covering in this video are going to be included in the description below but anyhow this is my backup wallet in case i come across a protocol that doesn't support phantom and out of all the platforms that i visited on solana there was only one platform that didn't support the phantom wallet personally out of the two i prefer the phantom wallet it reminds me of metamask except it has a lot more functionality and much like metamask Phantom also supports multiple wallets. So if you wanted to have one account for DeFi related activity and another account for NFT activity, then you can go ahead and create multiple wallets and link them to your Phantom web browser plugin. Now, once you've created a wallet for yourself, you're gonna need to fund it with some SOL tokens. To do that, you'll have to get them from an exchange and then send them over to your Phantom wallet because every transaction you do on Solana requires you to pay the transaction fees in SOL tokens. And that's important because before you send any assets from let's say Terra or Ethereum over to Solana, you wanna make sure you have some SOL tokens in your wallet. So this way, if you wanted to send those tokens back to the original network where they came from, you'll have enough gas to do that. Now, once you've loaded your Phantom wallet with SOL tokens, you wanna to come over here to the bridge page. To the left here, you connect with your Ethereum wallet. If you're using MetaMask, this makes it a lot easier. And to the right here, you wanna go ahead and connect to Solana using your Phantom wallet. Currently, they don't support transfers from Terra to Solana, but that's coming in the future. Once you've connected both wallets, then go ahead and select which asset you wanna transfer from Ethereum over to Solana. Then you go ahead, enter the amount that you want to transfer. And just like with any other Ethereum transaction, first you'll have to approve of the smart contract interaction. And then after that, you'll go ahead and approve of the actual transaction, which sends Ethereum over to Solana. And typically the process takes anywhere between five to 10 minutes. Once completed, you should see the asset show up in your Phantom wallet. So if once you've gone ahead and you've created a wallet, you've loaded it with funds, but then you'll be ready to pursue some yield farming opportunities on the Solana blockchain. The first one I'm gonna to introduce to you is Sabre. Basically, the initial product is gonna allow you to swap between pegged assets, hopefully with very low slippage. And to make sure that they have enough liquidity, they're offering some respectable yields to people who go ahead and provide liquidity with these pegged assets. On your USDC, you can get anywhere between 11 to 28%, depending on which stablecoin pool you provide liquidity to. Bitcoin, you can get upwards of 23%. And they even have Luna here where you can get 32%. The yields can be paid out in their governance token, ticker SBR. 
And if you wanted to go ahead and hedge or perhaps you didn't want any exposure to SBR, you can go ahead and sell your SBR tokens for a preferred asset. And they do have other things on the roadmap for Q3. They just got this huge injection of capital from a strategic fundraise. And with this huge capital injection, they're hoping to integrate the following, lending and borrowing, data analytics, asset management and dashboards, wallets, yield aggregators. You can also expect to see new asset and pools, which means you're more likely than not to see additional liquidity mining opportunities in the near future. And just generally speaking, I've been seeing a lot of money pour into the Solana ecosystem. And so for the upcoming months, expect to see a lot of yield farming opportunities materialize. We're going to see a lot of NFT platforms launching. So in my view, it's a really good time to get involved in the ecosystem. The way I'm looking to play this boom is take full advantage of the yield farming opportunities. And instead of selling all my yield farming rewards for my preferred token, I'm probably going to keep anywhere between 5 to 15% just in case the protocol delivers on its long term vision and becomes a prominent player in the ecosystem. The next protocol that we're going to cover is Francium. Francium is a leverage yield aggregator. This yield aggregator makes it super easy for the community to come up with strategies. And the strategy will be bonded to an NFT and this NFT will get a fee income of the corresponding strategy and will also be tradable on the strategies market, which is a great incentive for the community members to come up with their own strategies and also to share them with the rest of the community. I think this model has some potential because what typically happens with other yield aggregators is that they'll develop a strategy. It'll be good for about a few weeks to a month, but eventually the overwhelming number of deposits will dilute the yield of this strategy and for weeks to months until a new strategy is developed, depositors will earn a very low yield. Francium's new model, it almost creates a marketplace for strategies. So for that reason, you're likely to see a continuous revision of all the strategies to make certain that their respective yields stay competitive. Initially, when they launch, you're going to see the most basic strategies, strategies that you've seen in other protocols on other networks. For example, they're going to go ahead and reinvest all the liquidity mining incentives back into the LP position. And by doing so, you'll go ahead and auto compound your rewards. And by looking at their homepage here, it looks like they're also going to add leverage yield farming on top of that. This way, not only are you going to be able to auto compound your rewards, but you'll be able to leverage your existing position to extract additional value from the yield farming opportunities. And since the base asset is USDC, users can go ahead and deposit either USDC in the lending pool and earn a yield on USDC if, if they prefer a more conservative approach. Because there is some risk if you go ahead and leverage yield farm using USDC as a base asset. Since you're borrowing USDC to leverage farm, you're essentially taking a long out on the alt asset that you see here that's paired to the USDC. So if the alt asset doesn't perform well, you could end up getting liquidated. Now, after this auto compounding strategy, they also plan to deploy other strategies. They haven't released the details yet, but you can see that they're planning to add DeFi strategies and trading strategies. In their roadmap, they state that they're going to start with leverage yield farming. And then in September, they plan to release other strategies online. In November, you'll see strategy NFT online. And then by January, you should see a strategy social platform. I don't see a token associated with the protocol yet, which means that the yields that you're seeing here are strictly coming from other pools. So if this protocol intrigues you and or you're interested in pursuing leverage yield farming, make sure you go ahead and give them a follow on Twitter because I do expect that sometime in the future, we're going to go ahead and see all of the yields displayed here get boosted with their own native token. Another protocol you guys should check out, especially if you're interested in farming stable coins, is Mercurial Finance. It's aiming to be the liquidity protocol for stablecoin assets on Solana. And in pursuit of that vision, they're offering very robust yields for people who provide liquidity in stablecoin assets. In this pool here, they have $88 million locked and they're still able to offer a yield of 25%. Now, don't forget that the yield that you see here does not include the pool fees generated. So anytime people trade in and out this pool, all the liquidity providers are going to earn a piece of that action. Now, in terms of their future plans, they don't have a clear cut roadmap, but they did mention their main priorities for the next couple months. Number one, driving liquidity and adoption for stables on Solana, improving utilization and yield of their pools, creating grant programs for key community members, and developing a system for MER utility and function. 
Next step, we're gonna go ahead and cover Synthetify. It's a decentralized synthetic asset exchange. It's gonna allow for the creation exchange of synthetic assets that closely track the price of specific assets. The synthetic tokens are based on the SPL token standard that gives them the ability to easily integrate with other DeFi applications like automated market makers. And if you open up the application, you guys can click faucet and they'll give you 100 SNY tokens to test the platform for free. Currently, the protocol itself isn't offering any liquidity mining opportunities, but it's another one you want to go ahead and keep your eyes on because I think they'll definitely have to do some of that in the future. Currently, you can go ahead and yield farm SNY slash USDC on radio and earn a yield of 99%. And you can even come here to Francium to leverage farm. So instead of earning that 100% APR, you can earn up to 277%. But coming back to Synthetify, I think synthetics in general are gonna be very big in the future. And to make sure that they have liquid pools for all these synthetic assets, just like on the Mirror Protocol where you have the pools being incentivized, I have a feeling that in future iterations of this protocol, we're gonna get the same opportunities. So again, make sure you guys go ahead and bookmark this protocol. Now that I've covered a few DeFi protocols on Solana, let's cover some NFT platforms. Soul Life reminds me of Sims, except in this case, your character is gonna be an NFT, which means your character as it develops is gonna be tradable or exchangeable on the open market. And currently, if you wanna go ahead and get your character, you can buy a pack, either a male pack or a female pack. And depending on what you get, you could get one of the following tiers. So basically, by buying a pack you're rolling the dice hoping to get one of the more rare breeds and in my opinion instead of buying one of the packs if you're actually going to make a bet on the platform it might be a better idea just to wait until the platform launches and there's a marketplace to buy these nfts next up i wanted to show you guys a marketplace to buy and sell some of these nfts they don't support all the nfts out there but they do support soul punks ssb soul punks and eventually they're going to support bold badgers. When I first started exploring punks on this platform, the floor was a two to three soul. And since then the floor has doubled. And at one point I did see the floor being around nine soul. So if you think the hype is going to continue and soul punks will go ahead and benefit from the NFT mania, it may be worthwhile to buy NFTs trading around the floor price. Because I do personally know of people that bought hundreds of soul punks at the floor price and they immediately listed the soul punks for double the price. And within weeks, they were able to make 2X on their original investment. And given that I think this is just the beginning of the NFT mania, I do expect other NFTs to get listed in this marketplace. And another reason I think it's worthwhile to bookmark this page is because anytime if there's a new release, soul art here will likely display it as coming soon. So that way you can stay up to date. SMB, this sold out a few days ago. This actually sold out within the first couple hours. All of the monkeys were minted. You only needed two soul to mint them, and some of them are selling for 90 soul plus already. And this is just the price within the Discord channel. Once there's an open market, there's a possibility that these prices could go a lot higher. Now, if you've missed most of the other NFT opportunities and you're not interested in buying NFTs off the secondary market, there's another opportunity coming up on August 12th, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And to mint one of these 10,000 NFTs, you're gonna need six soul. So if you're interested in participating, mark it on your calendar, load up your wallet with at least six soul, and head over to the website on August 12th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Now, after watching that last segment where I cover NFTs, you might be thinking that we're approaching a market top. Personally, I think it's just the beginning. And in this short write-up that I published in my newsletter, I explain why. And if you guys wanted to read through this and understand my thesis, then make sure you guys go ahead and click the link in the description below to subscribe to my free newsletter and you'll get access to this short write-up. And even though a lot of the mania originated from Ethereum, I think it's eventually going to spill over into other blockchains because Ethereum is gonna get more expensive for users. That's gonna price out a lot of retail participants. And I think many of them are gonna to shift to other chains like BSC and Solana. And by then we'll probably see more marketplaces where people can sell and buy NFTs on the secondary market. And currently we really don't have anything like that on, for example, Solana. By the time this new cohort of investors get here, I think the infrastructure will be ready for them. And I think that's when we're really gonna see all of the NFT mania really take off on Solana and BSC. Now, if you're new to NFTs and you need a little bit more help or guidance, I do have an entire channel dedicated in my Discord to NFT talk. 
So for those who are interested, I would highly recommend that to you guys. But if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one access with me because you want to expedite your learning about DeFi, or maybe you're interested in hearing more of my NFT insights, you can go ahead and join one of my Patreon tiers by joining one of the higher tiers. You'll get one-on-one -on -one dialogue with me. By joining the lower tier I have for just $20 a month, you'll get a free subscription to the paid version of my newsletter. Plus you'll get access to my private Discord channel. And within that Discord channel, we recently made an NFT fund. And this fund is gonna use the money to go ahead and deploy in NFT projects. Currently, the NFT fund that we started isn't taking any more money, but we do have a wait list for individuals who are interested in joining. If you guys think the Patreon membership would benefit you in any way, make sure you guys go ahead and click the link in the description below to access my Patreon page. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Crypto One Stop signing out. I'll talk to you folks next time.